This PowerPoint is going to walk through the cause and effects of anthropogenic global warming. And anthropogenic, again, means human-caused global warming. The main cause of global warming in which all the other causes come from is human population growth. Human population growth does a lot of things, but one of the things we do as a society is um, we use a lot of fossil fuels, and as we've discussed in class, fossil fuels release greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide that help trap heat in the atmosphere. And when you trap heat in the atmosphere, you end up warming the earth. This slide is a graph showing human, po human population growth uh, from 1950 to um, now and predicted for beyond. It looks kind of like a regular growth of humans over time. Not so much to be worried about, maybe, um, until you kind of look at it in perspective on this graph here, showing that for most of the time of human history, we've had less than a, uh, a million humans on the planet, but then it's only been in the last uh, few decades that the amount of humans on the planet has exploded, and our use of fossil fuels has exploded, um, leading to the problem with global warming. A second cause of global warming is deforestation. As human populations get larger, our need for wood um, for building houses and we, our need for land for growing crops and raising cattle increases, so we end up cutting down forests, which is deforestation. Problem with that is, is uh, forests, plants, are responsible for absorbing a lot of the carbon dioxide naturally out of the air um, while they do photosynthesis. And if there's less forest on the planet, it's going to be absorbing less carbon dioxide, leaving more carbon dioxide in the air. More carbon dioxide is going to start warming the planet. Unfortunately, you can't just stop cutting down a forest and have it grow back overnight either. Um, these ecosystems that are established inside of a forest to get back to its normal um, climax community, as it's called, takes hundreds or even thousands of years. So what we're currently doing to the forests around the planet is really having an impact on the global warming problem. A third cause of global warming is how many cattle uh, we raise around the world to, to feed us meat eaters. Uh, cattle's, uh, cattle has a problem, uh, two, kind of a two-pronged problem. In order to raise cattle, that we're often doing deforestation, which is a problem we just discussed. But cattle on the land also release in their feces and their burps methane gas. Um, and methane gas is actually one of the, the greenhouse gases. It's something um, like 32 times better at actually trapping heat, atmos heat in our atmosphere um, when compared to carbon dioxide. So having a lot of cattle on the planet, which that's only increases um, as more and more McDonald's pop up, um, is releasing a lot of methane gas into the atmosphere and really is a cause of the warming of the planet. Another effect of global warming is climate change. These two terms are often confused. Uh, the term global warming is again, just as this graph shows, the recent warming that we we're experiencing over the last several decades. Um, and then ultimately, if as a planet you're warming up the average Earth's temperature, you're going to cause or have the effect of changing climates. So certain plants and animals that live in an area right now um, have adapted to that, that climate, that temperature range, and all the other factors that go with it. But as you warm it up in general, that's going to change which organisms, plants, and animals can survive in certain areas, ultimately changing, you know, say maybe grasslands to deserts or forests to grasslands, basically things that are warmer. Some areas even might get more rain, become tropical, depending on climate patterns as they change on the planet. Um, here's another graph that shows how climate change affects this. If you look at the 1990 United States, uh, the USDA people that you know tell you what kind of plants can go in different areas on the uh, in the United States. If you look at the, especially the purple and the blue at the top of the United States in 1990, you see the size of that. But fast forward to 2012, the zones of the coldest zones, which is the purple and blue, are getting smaller. And if you look at the southern coast of the United States in 1990, um, compared to 2012, you see some of the warmer zones are expanding. And that's because you know, the, the areas of the United States are getting a shift in climate from the global warming. Um, another effect of global warming is the extreme weather. Most people think of, oh, you heat us up, you're going to have drought, like they show in the bottom picture on the right. 
um, and dry areas lead to more fires, which is also true, um, forest fires. Uh, but you can also have extreme events of more rain or snow of areas because one of the things about warm air is warm air holds more moisture. So as air moves over the ocean that's warmer, it can pick up more moisture from the ocean. And as, when, as it moves onto the land, it's going to drop that moisture that it has. If it's uh, warm, it's going to come down as rain. And it can be a lot of rain because it's holding more moisture. Or if it's coming down in an area where it's cold, it can be snow. And it can be a lot more snow than you're used to because that air is carrying a lot more moisture. Um, at the same time, changing weather patterns might make certain areas become or get less rainfall and more of a drought, um, causing droughts and, and forest fires. So extreme weather is an effect of global warming. Also effect of global warming is animal extinctions. As the climate changes, um, animals can't survive in the same areas that they've always been adapted to. If those areas get smaller, um, animals that are uh, normally found in those areas are going to have a harder time surviving. Also as humans expand and cut down um, forests for cropland and places for humans to live, those ecosystems are disrupted and the animals and plants that live there can't just suddenly pack up and go live somewhere else. They end up dying off and when a lot of dying off happens you get extinctions. Um, as we learned in class, uh, they're looking at what is currently going on the planet as far as extinctions go as, as the sixth major extinction um, on the earth. Also an effect of global warming is the lowering of the albedo effect. Albedo effect is the amount of uh, reflection something has. So a mirror has, you know, on an albedo scale, like 100% reflection. And snow, um, you see these pictures at the, the top of the earth, um, is very reflective of sunlight. So in, in the first picture there it shows 1979, um, the amount of polar ice cap we have there is larger than the 2003 and when you have a larger polar ice cap you reflect more sunlight which means there's less sunlight absorbed which means the planet would be cooler but as the polar ice caps melt slowly over time um, they're going to be reflecting less sunlight and that means the earth is going to absorb that sunlight it'll turn into heat and that's going to add to the warming so the albedo effect we call that and that's the amount something reflects light and as the snow on the snow caps on the polar <laughs> polar the poles of the earth get smaller we're going to reflect less light and absorb more of that which is going to make more heat which is also going to accelerate global warming too so it's also kind of a cause as climate changes and rainfall starts to fall more in some places but in different places uh, certain areas around the world are going to experience fresh water shortages um, and you know if, if your climate pattern that you normally get X number of rainfall years suddenly gets reduced not suddenly but slowly gets reduced over time um, at human societies you just can't pack up and move a city that maybe um, is dependent on a glacier or snow fall in the mountains like Colorado is if the mountains get less and less snow over the years um, so it is ultimately an impact as climate changes. The rain is going to be falling in different patterns um, and certain areas are going to suffer shortages in rainfall. Another effect of global warming is the bleaching of coral reefs. Uh, coral reefs are affected because the carbon dioxide in the air also can dissolve as a gas into water. And carbon dioxide is a, is a really weak acid um, but it doesn't take much change in the acidity of the oceans for it to become acidic enough that things like coral reefs can't survive. Um, and they see lots of areas around the world where coral reefs are at the beginning of bleaching. They lose their um, microscopic algae partners, ultimately causing the coral to die. And that's bad because coral reefs are the fisheries or the, or the nurseries of fish around the world. And if we don't have a lot of coral reefs, the babies have a hard time, baby fish have a hard time growing up. And humans depend, a lot of humans around the world for their protein depend on fish. So as the oceans get more acidic, ultimately we're going to be reducing the amount of fish, which is going to affect human um, populations from this global warming. The last one on the list of effects is pine beetle populations. This one's particularly interesting for Colorado. 
Um, if you've ever been up into our mountains in the last 10-15 years, you notice there's a whole bunch of dead trees, uh, pine trees, and everybody around there says, oh, it's the pine beetles, it's the pine beetles. Well, the pine beetles are nothing new. Um, normally in our normal climate, every winter it gets really cold, um, and we have stretches of something like minus 20 below for a couple of weeks, and most of the pine beetle larvae that are in the trees get killed off. Uh, but what's happened in the last uh, decade plus is that the winters haven't been ex as extremely cold because of global warming. Um, and so the stretches of really cold weather are fewer and fewer. And so instead of, you know, 99% of all beetle larvae getting killed off, some fraction of that less is getting killed off. More are surviving. More beetles means they can infect more trees. When they infect more trees, they ultimately kill them. So our beetle population overload in our mountains mm -hmm. and the trees that they're killing um, something like 70,000 acres or so is a direct result of the warming of the winter temperatures in the mountains.